One thing is always true with the math used in science. Units always have to work out, 100% of the time. What I mean by this is that after you're done adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing a bunch of stuff, the units that you're left with should match up with what you're looking for. We'll start with unit conversion. Let's say we want to convert 1.3 meters into kilometers per hour. First, we write out 1.3 meters per second as an improper fraction. This makes it easier for us to see the crazy math that's coming up ahead. Next, let's talk about equivalent measurements. For example, there are 1,000 meters in 1 kilometer, and there are 60 seconds in 1 minute, and there are 60 minutes in 1 hour. Each of these measurements can be written as an improper fraction. For example, 1,000 meters in 1 kilometer can be written as 1,000 meters over 1 kilometer, or 1 kilometer over 1,000 meters. The fraction that we choose is based upon which unit we want to get rid of. We can write improper fractions for the other two equivalent measurements as well. Let's go back to the original question. We want to multiply the 1.3 meters per second by a fraction such that the meters in 1.3 meters disappears. It looks like this fraction will do the trick. Now if we accidentally wrote this fraction the other way around, the meters would multiply with each other and would become meters squared. And that's not what we're looking for. So let's go back to the previous fraction. We've taken care of meters so far. Now let's take care of the seconds. Seconds is in the denominator, so we'll need seconds in the numerator so that they can divide each other out. It looks like this fraction will do the trick. However, we're now left with minutes in the downstairs, and we'll need minutes upstairs so that they can cancel each other out. It looks like this last fraction can make that happen. When we multiply 1.3 by 1, by 60, and by 60, we get 4,680. And when we multiply 1 by 1,000, by 1, by 1, we get 1,000. 4,680 divided by 1,000 gives us 4.68. And kilometers divided by hours gives us kilometers per hour. If you're wondering why the final answer is written as 4.68, we need to take a look at the significant numbers in our calculations. 1.30 is 3 sig fig, and all the equivalent measurements have infinite certainty and infinite precision. For example, there is exactly 60 seconds in one minute. Not one more, not one less. Since 1.30 is 3 sig fig, our final answer is also 3 sig fig. Speed is defined as the change in distance over the change in time. If distance is measured in meters and time is measured in seconds, then the unit for speed would be meters per second. Velocity is defined as the displacement over time. If the object is moving at a constant speed in the same direction, then it's experiencing something known as uniform motion. The weird thing about velocity is that it is possible to have a measurable speed, yet have a velocity of zero. For example, if I walk for 30 meters around the classroom and it takes me 20 seconds to go all the way around, then I'll be walking with an average speed of 1.5 meters per second. However, if I finish at the same spot as where I started, then I would have a displacement of zero. And according to the formula, velocity is displacement over time. So zero divided by any amount of time still remains at zero. Let's go through a formal example. After school, Dominic decides to go to Dairy Queen. If Dairy Queen is located 834 meters forwards, and Dominic can travel at an average velocity of 1.30 meters per second forwards, how long will it take for Dominic to get there? Since this is a word problem, we'll start with our givens. We have a displacement of 834 meters forwards, a velocity of 1.30 meters per second forwards, and we're looking for time. If we take our formula from earlier and then multiply both sides by delta t, we get this formula. And then if we divide both sides by v, we end up with this formula. Now we can substitute in the values. 834 divided by 1.30 gives us 642. But 642 what? Remember what I said at the beginning of the video? Units always have to work out, 100% of the time. 
So let's prove that. First, keep in mind that m has the same meaning as m divided by 1. Next, let's dissect the meaning of m divided by m over s. We'll convert this into a big improper fraction. If you remember from back in grade school, dividing a fraction by another fraction is the same as multiplying the top fraction by the bottom fraction's reciprocal. And hey look, the m's divide each other out, and we're left with seconds over 1, which has the same meaning as seconds. Well, look at that. Units do work out. Make sure that you include a space between the measure and the unit, because that's also a part of physics grammar. If you're wondering if you have to show the unit verification in every homework question, the answer is no. I'm showing it to you here just to prove to you that units always work out. With enough homework practice, you'll be able to solve these types of problems using your imagination. Let's take a look at a graphical example. Here's a curve showing a person's journey from point A to point B. It looks like they traveled rather quickly in the beginning and then slowed down to a stop. The question is asking for the average velocity from point A to point B. And the best way to average things out is with a straight line. So let's determine the velocity from both extremes. At time zero, the position is at zero. At six seconds, the position is at three meters. To find average velocity, we divide displacement by time. Remember that the definition of displacement is change in position, so we'll expand the formula. Next, we sub in all the values and simplify. Our final answer is 0.50 meters per second forwards. By the way, did you notice a resemblance of this formula with another formula that you've seen in the past? Doesn't it look a little bit like the slope equation? Well, in fact, it is. But this time around, there's meaning to the slope. The slope of a distance time graph tells you the object's speed. And the slope of a position time graph tells you the object's velocity. Instantaneous velocity is defined as the velocity of an object at a particular instant in time, and can be found by finding the slope of a tangent on a position time graph. A tangent is a line that touches a curve at one point, but does not pass through. Let's say we want a tangent drawn at the top of the circle. When we draw the line, it can only touch the curve once and only once. Right now, the image doesn't seem very impressive, but if we zoom into the circle, we notice that the line is a good representation of what the top of the circle looks like. Up close, a flat horizontal line. A tangent is a useful tool for finding the slope at any point on a curve. It's like zooming into a curve so much that eventually the curve looks like a straight line. Let's revisit the position time graph again. But this time, let's determine the instantaneous velocity at the 2.5 second mark. Remember, you can't find slope with a curve, and you can't find slope with only one point. So what we'll have to do is to draw a tangent that touches the curve at the 2.5 second mark. This tangent represents what the curve will look like if we zoom in enough. Since this is a process that's done by hand, there is a large margin of procedural error. The best way to minimize errors here is by trying to balance the tangent right on top of the point, where the angle of separation between the line and the curve is roughly the same on both sides. Next, we pick two points on the line. I recommend that you find some clean points, like points that cross through the grid lines on the graph. That way you minimize any instrumental errors from trying to guess values that are just floating in space. So here we'll pick the one second mark. And the position at one second is 1.0 meters forwards. The 3.5 second mark also lies on the grid. So at 3.5 seconds, the position is at 2.5 meters forwards. We then use the velocity formula in its expanded format. Plug in the values, and with two sig fig givens, you'll have two sig fig answers. Finally, remember to place a space between the measure and the unit. For more fun adventures like this, continue with your homework on course pack page 9 and draw the position time graph on course pack page 11. If you want, you can draw the graph on a separate piece of graph paper, as you'll be drawing five tangents off that graph 
and then measuring the instantaneous velocities off those five slopes. Finish off all your homework, and I'll see you in the next episode.